How long does sunlight take to reach Earth? Light travels at a constant speed of about 300,000 kilometers per second, and the sun lies at about 150 million kilometers from Earth. So by performing a simple calculation, we can work out that light takes approximately eight minutes and 20 seconds to reach Earth from the surface of the sun. But this isn't the entire picture. Sunlight is in fact ancient. In reality, it can take tens or even hundreds of thousands of years for light to reach Earth from the sun. So, to understand where this big difference comes from, we need to look deeper, beyond the surface of the sun. Photons are created in the cores of stars, where temperatures can vary wildly depending on the size of the star. But for the sun, the temperature of the core is about 15 million degrees Celsius. With temperatures so high, the sun is able to fuse hydrogen into helium through nucleosynthesis in a process that's known as the proton-proton chain. When two protons collide, one converts into a neutron and binds to the other, creating a deuterium isotope, a positron and a neutrino. This deuterium isotope can then bind with another proton, creating a helium-3 isotope and releasing a photon in the form of gamma rays in the process. All photons travel in a straight line through space at the speed of light. So from the moment they are created in the core of the sun, they immediately begin traveling outwards towards the surface. To calculate the time it takes the photon to travel this journey should be as easy as applying the logic we used earlier. Using the radius of the sun as about 700,000 kilometers, we get a time of about 2.3 seconds. But the journey from the core to the surface of the sun isn't as simple or as direct as the journey from the surface of the sun to the Earth. The sun's interior is a scorching plasma, primarily comprised of hydrogen with a central density upwards of 160 grams per cubic centimeter, 12 times that of Earth's. The temperatures inside the sun allow for ionization of atoms, stripping the electrons from their nuclei. In the case of hydrogen, we're left with a proton and an electron. Now I mentioned that photons will travel in a straight line from the moment they are created, but there's one caveat to this. Photons can change their direction if they collide with a charged particle, in this case, protons. Knowing that these photons can change their direction, we can calculate what's known as the mean free path, which is just the average distance a photon will travel before colliding with a charged particle. The mean free path can be expressed as one over the opacity times density of the star. So for the sun, we get a mean free path of about 2.8 times 10 to the minus five meters. In other words, the photon travels approximately 30 microns before colliding with a proton, approximately half the width for the human hair. Now, when I say that the photon collides with the proton, it's important to realize that this doesn't happen like a ball bouncing off the floor. Rather than the gamma ray bouncing off the proton, what actually happens is the gamma ray is absorbed by the proton. The proton then has extra energy, which it wants to release, and so the gamma ray is re-emitted in a random direction. Two things happen when the photon eventually collides with the proton. The first is that with each collision, the photon loses a little bit of energy, and this has the effect of increasing the photon's wavelength from gamma rays through X-rays, UV, and then eventually we get a peak in the optical. This is why when we look at the sun, we see it in the visible spectrum, and we don't see a massive peak in gamma rays. Secondly, as I mentioned, the photon is re-emitted in a random direction. This process of absorption and re-emission is what's known as a random walk problem, and it's key to understanding why it takes light so long to escape the sun. A random walk describes the motion of objects which at every time step have an equal probability of traveling in any direction. So for a simple 2D random walk, a particle can either go up, down, left or right with equal probabilities. Now, of course, in the sun, this becomes a lot more complicated with the interactions happening in 3D and with all possible re-emission directions happening across all angles of the sphere. But the basic principles still apply. We can mathematically describe the random walk of a photon as distance a photon will travel equals the mean free path of the photon times the square root of the number of steps the photon takes. Now we can rearrange this equation to calculate the number of steps that a photon takes by using the distance as the radius of the sun and using the mean free path that we calculated earlier. Performing this calculation gives the average number of steps that a photon takes inside the sun. And this comes out to about 6.25 times 10 to the 26 steps. We can equate this to the total distance that an average photon will travel inside the sun, and that comes out to about 1.75 times 10 to the 19 kilometers. Finally, we mentioned that light travels at a speed of about 300,000 kilometers per second. So we can calculate the time that it takes a photon to travel this path. 
and that calculation gives a result of 1.7 million years. But in reality, electromagnetic interactions with the plasma inside the sun actually decreases the mean free path of the photons and so decreases the length of time it takes for them to travel from the core to the surface of the sun. So the actual value of the length of time it takes for a photon to travel from the core to the surface of the sun is about 100,000 years. So whether you're watching this video while sunbathing under the warm summer sun or stuck inside on a typical British overcast day, remember that the sunlight that lights up our planet is in fact ancient. As you can probably tell, this video took a lot of effort to make and is very different from the other videos I've made in the past. If you enjoyed these type of science videos and you want to see more of them on the channel, make sure to like the video, let me know in the comment section and subscribe for more in the future.